If you've ever completed either of the Red Alert campaigns, you don't need me to tell you that things do not end well for Stalin. Regardless of which faction comes out on top, the Soviet premier meets a suitably gruesome end. This was not, however, the end of Red Alert, as two expansions would follow a year later. Counter-Strike and the Aftermath further expand on the alt-history World War II concept by adding new technology to the arsenals of both the Allies and the Soviets. As some of you may know, last year I wrote a series of articles that sought to put the events of the two Red Alert campaigns into a single chronological order. I won't go into the details in this video, but suffice to say the chronology might not be exactly what you were expecting. But it was while I was playing through the recent remaster that an idea got stuck in my head. How confident are we that Stalin actually died at the end of Red Alert? Certainly the Soviet campaign leaves no room for doubt, with Stalin first being poisoned and then repeatedly shot, including through the head. Looking at the Allied side of the story though, it would be more accurate to say that Stalin was left for dead as opposed to killed outright. I think there can be no doubt that Westwood did not intend for his fate to be ambiguous, at least at first, but when I look at events shown in the expansions, I'm left wondering if we all miss some crucial details that suggest he escaped his death. Before I go any further, I'll say that if this video fails to convince you that Stalin survived, that's fine. I have an alternate explanation of events as I mentioned a moment ago, and I'll link to that chronological mission list in the description. But without further ado, let's overanalyze some throwaway details in the Red Alert expansions. As I said at the beginning of this video, a variety of new units are added by the Red Alert expansions. Their absence from the base game suggests that these are the latest developments in wartime technology and are only coming into production at the end of the war. Taking a look at the Soviet Tesla tank, we can actually chart its evolution from the initial batch of prototypes in the Counter-Strike mission Legacy of Tesla, to a broader test deployment in Crackdown and Fresh Tracks, and then finally, their mass production in time for the events of the aftermath. All this implies the passage of time, time in which the Soviets can rally and launch a counter-attack, or counter-strike, that prolongs the war. Now this could happen under the leadership of Nadia, Kukov, Gudenko, or even Kane, as the fates of all of these characters are left unanswered by the Allied campaign. But about halfway through the aftermath levels, we're sent on a mission to capture the latest piece of Allied technology, the phase tank. And who is it that sends us on this mission? An oversight, perhaps you're thinking, but let's take a look at the next mission briefing as well. Well, when exactly did this mission take place then? Looking around the map, we find that the phase tank was far from the only piece of advanced tech present in the base. The Chrono Tank is an evolution of the latest in cutting-edge Allied technology, a unit which does not yet exist during the assault on Moscow as portrayed at the end of Red Alert. Furthermore, in the following level, the Soviets arrive with their own advanced technology, fielding missile subs and the new production Tesla tanks. The references don't stop here either. In shock therapy, Stalin assigns his elite guard to the destruction of a treasonous population. This mission follows a formula that becomes more and more common in the expansions. Gradually, people are starting to turn on the Soviets from within. A slew of defections is followed by a series of uprisings, culminating in the Gronyev Revolution, where yet again Soviet weapons are turned on their own people. The question that this theory raises though, is that if Stalin somehow survives the end of Red Alert, what does happen to him? The answer to that is perhaps in this same mission. At the end of the level, the defeated rebels plead with the player to allow a convoy of their women and children to escape. If you decide to relent in your attack and allow the trucks to pass, Stalin immediately signs your death warrant and dispatches his personal guard to bring about your destruction. By this point in the war then, the Soviets are collapsing in on themselves and turning on each other, a situation that oddly mirrors events from the end of the Soviet campaign. Perhaps then, the ultimate fate of Stalin is not so unknown. As we've seen, he is doomed to self-destruction and will fall at the hands of his own countrymen, if not at London, then at Moscow.